RN. And what we do know was that uh, there were at least 40 people in that party room prepared to vote for Kevin no, Sorry, we, we, we don't know that. The fact is that there was very strong support in the room and the reason that there wasn't a ballot was that there wasn't strong support for change. But there was, after all the destabilising and after all the leaks to the press about this person who used to be a Gillard backer is now a well, Rad up backer, we didn't get a show well, of support. the fact is that there's been a lot of speculation uh, about this matter a lot of talk about uh, strength of support and so on. If there was strength of support, it would have been demonstrated uh, uh, in the room if there were supporters for change. There were not supporters for change in that room yesterday. What we got was a very strong endorsement of the Prime Minister, and that does resolve this matter once and for all. She walked into the room uh, and put a leadership on the line, and no one nominated. Wasn't it true, though? Didn't didn't Bob Hawke en end up being elected unimposed when Paul Keating didn't pull the trigger and... Paul Keating ended up being Prime Minister. This is, uh, this is uh, the, the second occasion uh, that the Prime Minister has demonstrated that strength of support. Uh, if there was strength of support, there would have been a vote in the party room. Now, of course, there was a lot of speculation. People were running around claiming uh, all sorts of numbers. They clearly weren't there. That's why there wasn't a vote in the party room. Does Kevin Rudd have any credibility left as an alternative la leader of the Labor Party? Fran, I think the most important thing that every Labor member can do is to solemnly uh, prompt, make a promise that we won't be talking about ourselves, but get out there and talk about the things that matter to the Australian people. Uh, well, with respect, I think there's some more talking or explaining that the, the, the public would like to hear about what actually went on yesterday, because it's pretty hard to make sense well, of if, you, if you're not around this building well, and you're respect, trying to look how government does things. With respect, Fran, I think what the Australian people want us to do is what we've been doing, and we have not lost sight uh, of the fact that there is important policy to be put in place just this week. We got the National Disability Insurance Scheme through the Parliament. We had a very significant increase in the pension, building on the biggest increase we've had in over 100 years. The government has not lost its focus on policy. Uh, despite all of these events that have been going on, every minister has been getting stuck into their policy agenda, and the results of that are in the Parliament for all to see. And what people really want to see is a contest of ideas about the future. Who's got the plan to make this economy more prosperous, to spread opportunity? And quite clearly, in that contest of ideas, uh, the strength of Julia Gillard will prevail over the slash and burn policies of Tony Abbott. In the end, that was uh, that contest of ideas and the strength of Labor's policy and ideas was really at the heart of what kicked off yesterday because Simon Crean, a former Labor leader, when he flicked the switch, when he called the spill, in fact, perhaps his lasting legacy may have been his, his statement that switching leaders wouldn't fix the problem. He said the government was damaged not just by leadership destabilisation but also by some of the decisions it's made. He spoke of a duality of causes. Some of those decisions, and he named a couple of policy positions and the government's capacity to sell the Labor message. Well, let's just run through what we've achieved and what we're doing. I mean, we've got carbon pricing uh, in. It's working. It's uh, out there making us a cleaner energy country. Uh, we've put in place, or are putting in place, the trials for the National Disability Insurance Scheme. We've got in place the biggest pension increase in over 100 years. We're rolling out the NBN. Uh, we're now embarking on a vital reform for school improvement. This is a huge reform agenda for Australia. We've tripled the tax-free threshold, something absolutely critical to low-income workers right across this country. But uh, what we have to do is we have to engage in that discussion of those ideas and their importance to the future of the country. And it is true uh, that the sort of issues that uh, we've had in the last uh, few days, in the last few weeks, uh, do block out uh, the discussion that the Australian people want us to focus on and that we are doing and putting in place through our cabinet processes and our party processes. And now that this is resolved once and for all, we've got to get out there and we've got to talk to the Australian people about the things that matter to them. And that's what we're focusing on. Treasurer, do you have some sympathy for Simon Crean and the move he took yesterday as an elder statement of the statesman of the party to try and move things forward, to break the deadlock, the stalemate, as he said? Look, I can understand why Simon did what he did yesterday and, uh, of course, uh, he, he lives with the outcome of that. Uh, but I do think uh, Simon uh, has been well motivated. Uh, do I agree with the, uh, the method? Not necessarily, uh, but I do agree that he was well motivated. And what about some of his criticisms in particular? He cited two policies. He thought... He thought the government, and I think this is directed really largely at you, the government's failure to put an end to speculation that would tax superannuation and also the government's ongoing talk of what he described as class warfare. Well, 
that the Prime Minister has dealt with the issue of superannuation, but I just make this point. We're the party that built superannuation. Simon and I fundamentally agree on that. We are the party that is improving superannuation. We fundamentally agree on that. Uh, we've got a very big agenda when it comes to national savings, which is, is of tremendous importance uh, to the future uh, of our country. So the government's going to get on with that work. It's vital work and it's not secured because if you look at what we're doing in superannuation, all of that would be slashed and burnt uh, by Tony Abbott. And I share uh, Simon's view that this is a critical issue as we go through the next election, uh, how we strengthen and improve our national superannuation system, how we strengthen and improve our schools through the Gonski reforms. These are the vital issues. And that is why uh, yesterday was important because it has resolved this matter once and for all. And what Labor members have to do is to engage in the battle of ideas and the contest with Tony Abbott as we go through to the election, uh, which will be uh, in on September 14. It's 16 minutes to eight on breakfast. Our guest in the Parliament House studios is the Federal Treasurer, Wayne Swan. Uh, but Treasurer, as you put forward and as you participate in that contest of ideas, has your credibility be damaged? I mean, people are shaking their heads at the events of yesterday. Today. The media coverage, savage. The Prime Minister may have shored up her leadership, but really well, the government, I mean, the government was a laughing stock after well, yesterday. Well, the government is kicking some very big policy goals, and we haven't taken our eye off the policy ball at all. And if you just want to talk about... But you're not era, getting any credit well, for that, are you, in the polls? Are people even hearing that or well, noting that? Well, Frank, that? can I just say something about polls? Because I think that the, the public discussion of polls, the media discussion of polls political parties' discussion of polls is all just uh, noise which is getting in the way uh, of a fundamental discussion about policy. And I think if one positive thing could come from uh, the events of recent times, let's have less discussion about uh, polls and let's have more discussion about ideas and about policies. And that's what I think the Australian people are looking for. As the Prime Minister gets ready to engage again in that battle of ideas or ongoing um, battle of ideas, she will be forced to reshuffle her cabinet because Simon Crean, uh, Arts Minister and Regional um, Affairs Minister, has, has, is no longer in her cabinet. What about the other Rudd supporters and agitators in her front bench? What about Chris Bowen? What about Anthony Albanese? What about Kim Carr? Is the PM in a punishing mood? These are matters that she will consider in the normal course of events. Uh, she'll do that over the next few days. What do you think she should do in the interest of healing the party? Look, these are matters for the Prime Minister and they are matters for, the, for individual ministers. She'll work her way through those issues as we always do. Would you be happy to be, remain sitting around the Cabinet table with those people? Well, Fran, I've just finished making the point to you in this interview that the most important thing that we can be doing is talking about the future, the policy agenda of the government, the policy agenda of what the opposition would do to these critical reforms, and I'm going to take my own advice. Treasurer, just finally, Tony Abbott says there should be another election to stop the circus, in his words, to stop Labor's civil war. And he has now declared he will call a no-confidence no motion, a vote of no confidence in the government, on the very day that you will be standing up to deliver your budget. Well, uh, this just really does demonstrate how negative Tony Abbott is. I mean, this is the tactic that he used for about the first year of the life of this government almost every day into the House, moving a suspension of standing orders, none of which, 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 which he could never win. And that's all that happened yesterday. He had the hide to claim in the media yesterday that there was some sort of vote on confidence in the House. That is simply not true, but yet another demonstration of the extent to which Tony Abbott will go to spread misinformation uh, and to be negative. Yesterday was a gift to Tony Abbott, though, wasn't it? There's no doubt that we've been through a, a couple of very difficult days, but what the government has done all the way through this is to keep our eye on the policy ball. Uh, that is demonstrated on a daily basis, and it was demonstrated this week with, with, with the passage of the National Disability Insurance Scheme, something the government uh, is immensely proud of and a huge reform for Australia, and we're knuckling down, working our way through other important reforms, as well as making sure we keep our economy as strong as possible, supporting an agenda for jobs and growth, all of which is under threat from the slash and burn approach of Tony Abbott, which is uh, taken the cue from Campbell Newman on. And just before we leave this interview, talking policy, we should perhaps mention that the government in the end had to pull those four media reform bills. Now talk about um, dropping the policy ball. There's been a lot of criticism oh, from right. within and others about the way the government well, let, let, implemented that, that policy, let's, steered that policy. Oh, friend, let's just deal with that. This has been the matter of extensive discussion for years. 
with all manner of reports before the government. We responded in the normal way. It was always going to be the case that when that legislation went to the parliament, uh, there would be a view from the crossbench that would determine its passage or not. We made that very clear when we announced the legislation. And I don't think anyone is surprised about the way it played out uh, as the crossbenchers uh, thought about whether they would support the bills or not. And at the end of the day, there weren't enough of them to support the bills. That was as true on the day we published the legislation as it was true two years ago, and it was never going to change. And much of the analysis over the media laws fails to take any of that realistic assessment into account, but I'm not surprised by that. Wayne Swan, thank you very much for joining us on Breakfast. Thank you. Wayne Swan is the Federal Treasurer and the Deputy Prime Minister of Australia. RN, your world unfolding.